Brian Powell of Iron Far here with uh, runner Max King uh, on La Palma before we head over to the Spanish mainland for the Zagama Marathon. Um, we talked about a year and a half ago, I think, as you just sort of joined the Montreal team. Um, and at the time, was it a year and a half ago that you would have joined Yeah, the I think it was about a year and a half ago. Is yeah, it? so the winter, yeah. yeah I think so. so I interviewed you then, uh, I think, over the phone okay. um, about you sort of concentrating more on the ultra side of things um, going forward, but you've really kept quite a mix. I mean, over the last couple, just couple months, you've run the Olympic Trials Marathon and ran a PR at 213? 214. 214, something, yeah. Um, just last weekend, you ran a B qualifier for the uh, steeplechase for the Olympic Trials. Um, so you could, there's a chance you could be running in the Olympic Trials in a couple weeks, oh. or a couple months, oh. yeah. yeah. Um, You've run some ultras, you've run some shorter trail races. You really are a, a runner. Well, by concentrating on ultras, I meant that I was going to actually run some. <laughs> that's, that's my idea. <laughs> um, I mean, how are you enjoying doing some ultra marathons? It's good. I mean, you know, it's it's a different ball game. And I yeah, I had the idea of actually concentrating a little bit more on them. Um, but it turns out that I just am better at shorter distances and I had a hard time like transferring over to an ultra and so I, I still have a hard time with you know just anything like 40 50 miles right now and I'm working on it but you know I've, I feel more comfortable with third, at the 50k distance now and I feel like I can run those and finish strong um, and then uh, you know the 50 mile distance I'm still not quite there yet I actually, obviously I haven't run one in quite a while since American River but you know, I'm, I've done two 40 milers this year now and feel more comfortable there, but at the, toward the end, again, I'm, I'm getting toward, you know, actually not, I don't know if it's so much as bonking or just fatiguing phenomenally and just blowing up or what, but, you know, it's like I, I don't feel comfortable at that 50 mile distance. And, and maybe that's, you know, as people have told me, like, you're never going to feel comfortable at 100 mile distance. Well, it may be true, but I feel like I can get there at least, you know, with 50 mile distance and, and, and really kind of, feel like I'm having a good race, I guess. Yeah. Well, maybe, did, how does your, you know, your personal focus go? I mean, are you jumping into ultras while, you know, really training to stay sharp on the, the, the steeplechase side of things, the marathon side of things? How does that work? No, I mean, not really. I mean, the, the steeplechase was actually, I actually did uh, two workouts over hurdles in the last month, and uh, those were the first two hurdle workouts I've done in four years, so I wouldn't say I, I've actually been doing any work for that at all. Um, but, I mean, what helps in that is all of the training that I'm doing for ultras, um, the, the actual the mountain running and the, the hills and stuff. Um, they're just making me a much stronger runner, like, over all the distances, and so that's really been a really big key in, in keeping up on, on my speed and stuff is just doing the hills. Um, I'm just much stronger. So you think that could translate, you know, to, to, the, to every runner? I mean, do you think that adding in some trails and some mountain running that would really aid their, their yeah. marathon running and their shorter road racing? I absolutely do. After doing, after really, because I guess once what I did was instead of really focusing on ultras the past couple of years is um, I focused more on mountain running as kind of a, a segue to mm -hmm. those ultras and really focused on running more hills um, and stuff like that, not necessarily putting in the kind of hours that I need to out on the trail to do ultras, but um, doing more of the hills, and that has really um, impacted all of my distances. It's made me a stronger marathon runner. It's made me faster uh, in the short distances as well. Um, and so I definitely see a huge impact from just running more hills, and not just like hill workouts and intervals, but actually just running hills easily. Just your training days. Just training days. Just running up and down hills, and and uh, you know it's like with the with the ultras, I haven't put in the time that I need to out there, but mm -hmm. that's coming. That that'll be the next step. Yeah, your time on your trails is also, I, I neglected to mention that last uh, last fall you won the World Mountain Running Championships. Right. Yeah. Uh, so, um, do you have a favorite? I mean, at this point, like, you know, if you, if you had the next six months you were to pick one race. Um, you know, I don't know. I don't, actually. That's, I just love running. That's the point of it is that I love doing, like, all these different events, mm -hmm. and that's what's really fun for me. Obviously, I love competing too, and that's part of it. Is like I love seeing how I still stack up in the steeplechase. That's why you know I did it two weeks ago. Is just to see if I could. I'm like, oh, I'm getting stronger. I'm getting faster. I'm faster at marathon. I'm faster at ten mile distance. I had a PR at a ten miler 
um, in uh, October last year mm -hmm. by 45 seconds, I think, over like when I would actually be concentrating on that. So I'm definitely getting faster and getting stronger from doing all this training. So I'm like, well, why not? I'll just try a steeplechase. How far off you were steeplechase PR were you? It was 10 seconds, but where I would usually open for the first race of the season, it's about 10 seconds faster than that. Um, and so, you know, it's like, is that is that steeplechase PR? Is that within range? It's like, I kind of feel like it is. And so that's why I did that and stuff. And I, I don't really have a favorite because I love it all. I mean, I love doing it, every, all these different events and competing against all these different people. And I think part of the appeal is that I get to compete and see how I stack up in all of these different running events. Because, you know, after all, after what Dakota said is just running. So, yeah. and, it's, and it's all just running. So do you think we'll, you'll go for another uh, U.S. cross country or world, you know, world cross country team? Yeah, absolutely. Cross country is probably, you know, if I had a favorite, cross country is probably that, uh, that event uh, is probably my favorite event. It's just the way that cross country has gone, it's more of a track race now. And so what I wish is that we had that, you know, 7 to 13 mile actual cross country race, like, a cross country race like they're not like what we run now is not cross country it's on a grass track and so that is really usually it's disappointing for me to see cross country go that direction and i know i'd be a much stronger runner in uh in, a, in an event that it was actually cross country you know like so something maybe like uh World Mountain Running or the IAU when they have their, their Trail Running World Championships. Yeah, exactly. Something like that. That's a short distance race, but it's actually like got some technical terrain to it. It's got some difficulty to it. It doesn't necessarily have to mean like you have the parameters set by your, the World Mountain Running, but you have plowed fields. You Maybe you throw in a steeple like with a fence or you know, hay, bales, hay or... bales, something like that. You know, like pure like UK... Um, you know, English cross country, you know, the way they used to do it is what I really would like. I mean, to do see. you think that that's perhaps a function of just needing to have the, the top names of track, you know, you know, track runners to go cross over and, and do well? Because those are much more well known and more sponsorship money behind them. Yeah, I mean, like, that's the theory is that, you know, they started to make it a little easier so that people wouldn't get hurt and. You know, I don't know, it's like all the Africans, like a lot of the Americans, I should say, don't do cross country, but you'll see all the Africans do that as kind of a preseason to, mm -hmm. uh, to track and field. Um, so <clears throat> I, I don't know if it's so much that as, as, I don't know what it is really, what forced that to become such a tame sport. Yeah, I mean, so you've run competitive track for years, you've done the road racing thing, you've done, you've been on the world, the world hundred, uh, excuse me, cross country championships multiple times. What can, you know, pure trail running and mountain running and ultra running take from those more mature running ass disciplines? Like, hmm. what can cross over? I mean, as a sport, not a you know, not as individual runners. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I mean, they each one does it a little bit differently, but they're right now. I mean, they're, you know, they're under different banners as far as IAAF and trail running and ultra running go. Um, but I feel like they do have similar governing bodies mm -hmm. as far as like structure and rules and stuff like that. So, I mean, and each one's completely separate. So I don't know if, if there's really anything that they should be taking. Um, at least I, you know, I, I'm kind of blanking on anything that they could, like Volter running could take anything from uh, the track and, and cross country side of things. I mean, obviously uh, publicity and, um, you know, coverage of certain events uh, you know, is always a great thing, but th that uh, that comes from popularity, I think, and not so much from uh, a governance side of things. Mm -hmm. and so, I mean, definitely like covering ultra races. I mean, you yourself have started doing that more, and other media outlets have, um, and so we're so we're starting to see more coverage of those ultra races, like play by play and stuff. Mm -hmm. And but those are things that we don't see in cross country races. I mean, it's the same thing. The last couple of uh, world cross country championships, people have started to get out their phone. Um, media outlets like yourself, like Runner Space or Flow Track, they get out their phone and start tweeting away at who's in the race. Um, mm -hmm. Coverage wise, you know, it's it's basically the same between cross country trail running and, and ultra running. It's no different than, um, you know, because it's not a televised sport. Yeah. Kind of so. I mean, one thing, one change that's happened over the last couple of years in, in trail and ultra running, I know you, you consider yourself a more broad runner, but, you know, you're sponsored by Montreal Mountain Hardware these days, and, and as well as some other sponsors. Um, 
do you, do you hold on another job, or does do these sponsorships allow you to, to re focus fully on your running? No, I mean I do hold down another job. I work, um, but I did. I was able to retire from chemical engineering um, last year, but now I, I do have a part-time job as a shoe buyer at Foot Zone and Ben, um, and so. It takes little pieces of a couple of different things to kind of piece all that together and make it work. Um, a sponsorship um, by one company isn't quite going to do it right now in trail mm -hmm. running, but that's that's one thing that has changed a lot. Is like we're seeing people start to be able to quit their jobs or you know use um, use the sponsorship as a majority of their income um, for for you know for their salary basically and, and that's been pretty huge and that I think we've seen like the level of competition in the last probably four or five years mm -hmm. really come up and that's what that's from and um, you know a lot of that uh, relates to just having more media coverage, bigger races, more popularity in, in the masses and, um, and stuff like that. I mean you think that partly comes from in five years ago in trail and ultra running basically a runner threw on a singlet and that was how they represented a team like you do a lot more for you and a bunch of other top athletes do a lot more in working with your sponsors yeah what is your role in interaction with say Mount Hardware in Montreal well I mean it's it's the same as any other athlete that you'd have I mean it's it's you know whatever blogging um, making sure like right now it's social media and stuff and making sure that we're getting the word out about what we're doing um, but it's also um, product testing with them to make things better. Um, you've got more of a base of trail runners now that are looking for product to work. Um, mm -hmm. And so we're working with, um, with manufacturers to get product that's actually uh, quality product that's working for them. Um, so you give them feedback and everything. And also just marketing wise is like, you know, people are looking, um, there's more of a broad base. And so they're, they're looking at the top athletes of the sport now. Um, and it's just like anything else, you, I, you know, it's, it's weird for me to say it, but you have fans uh, who are looking at you and um, seeing what you do. I mean, seeing what you wear, um, seeing how you train, what kind of nutrition you have, um, and all of that stuff. Because there's such a broad base now, you get more eyes mm -hmm. on what you're actually doing. And, and that's, I think, helped that's those sponsorship dollars go up. Um, because, you know, we're more valuable as an athlete now than we were five years ago when nobody, you know, the sport wasn't that big and nobody was really looking at the athletes. Yeah, so. maybe a month later you'd see an ultra running magazine where you'd have a photo or something on the cover if yeah. you ran a good race. Right, exactly. But that didn't do as much. Um, for the companies because there weren't as many eyes, you know, mm -hmm. looking at those and stuff. And so it's a little bit different now and, um, yeah. So, uh, there will be a lot of eyes looking this weekend. There's a, a ridiculously good field, uh, gathering for the Zagama yeah. Askari Marathon in uh, Basque Country. Uh, what are your thoughts about that race? <sighs> You're going as one of the favorites, <laughs> for sure. I. I, guess, I don't know, I guess. Am I considered one? I, I, I don't know. Yes. Okay. All right, good. I, you know, it, it's hard because last year I did my first sky race uh, in Sierra and all, and I got crushed. I mean, it was like I got absolutely, I had a bad race, but I got crushed. Um, and so I'm a little nervous going into this one, mm -hmm. and I'm putting a little more focus on this one than I did last year just to make sure that hopefully I'll, you know, have a good race and, and won't really screw that up again. Uh, have a better idea of what I'm getting into now than I did last year um, and you know who's racing and stuff um, it was unfortunate because I was really looking forward to racing Marco de Gasperi and uh, he's pulled out but Killian's still in the race um, all the Americans that are here are still in the race which you know uh, most of them are ultra runners but shoot man I mean it's almost an ultra ultra course it's going to take us four hours to mm -hmm. do a marathon so uh, definitely plays to their strengths probably more than mine so I'm looking at them. Um, there's got to be some other European runners that I don't even know about. So For sure. Well, uh, best of luck this weekend and enjoy the running. All right, thanks. Hi, I'm Max King. You probably never met me because I'm not an ultra runner. Trail runner. <laughs>